Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Bahi Whitethorn Sr. And I live here in Flagstaff, the suburbs of Flagstaff, Tony Park. And we're uh, at my studio, work studio. And this is my uh, water here. And I ahead of time I put some the, the watercolor paper in the bin so I could get it soaking. And it all, wa watercolor is designed to be wet or dry. So we'll do two, two different things today. Wet on wet washes and dry brushing. So uh, uh, one of the most important things that I've learned in my life as an artist or a watercolorist is time. How much time I have the paper in the water, how much time I work on that piece of paper that I just took out of the, the, uh, 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 the water tray. And this is my uh, paint tray here. And I put out my colors. I put yellow, blue, red. And then I'll also have another tray here just to where I've been working already. And what I'll do today is sort of begin with uh, wet on wet washes. I have some on the bottom where they've been soaking, been in the water for about maybe 15 minutes. And I'm going to begin with that. So I'm dabbing my one inch brush. And I'm going to go to my yellow first. And of course, I don't know how many of you have seen me do this. But this is taking the one inch brush, loading up with yellow. And you come across the middle. And you go all the way across one stroke and leaving it and rolling my, my brush and then going over that again. Then I go back and reload my brush with yellow and then put it on the bottom. I'm thinking about a landscape. I'm gonna go from my, 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 uh, I got orange here, cadmium red and I'm going to go right over the, uh, the yellow and then above the yellow on the bottom, just one stroke. And I'm going to I'm go to a, uh, a darker red because I have it out. I'm going to put it right over the orange and a little bit on the yellow. I'm just putting strokes across from one end of the paper to the other. Then I'm going to take my, some blue, take some water, put it in, dab it in my blue, and get a, uh, load my brush. I'm going to go to the top of my paper and go across. I'm going to go, come across the middle one time also, back. Then I'm going to go over my yellow on the bottom. Let's say take some uh, blue, put it down the middle of the, the uh, take a little more, the red. The biggest thing is keeping your uh, water clean, your brush clean. Then I'll take my uh, blue again. I'm gonna go right above the red and in between the red, across. So every stroke becomes uh, more intense just because there's a layer of paint underneath. And then you, your strokes become more defined. There's no brushing involved. The water on the paper is doing all the work. And then after this, you, you can move it and see some of the action that takes place. The water that's on the paper does all the moving. And you didn't brush it. You didn't spend any time 
any more than what you need to do what you need to do. Now, I can work on it depending on which side of the, which way I like. Either this way, I'm doing a sunset, or doing it this way, one or the other. And I kind of like this. So what I'll do is uh, take a round brush, make sure my water it, I'm dipping in is clean, and I'm going to take some, mix a purple, red, and blue. Pretty dark consistency. This is my horizon. This is going to be below. Again, loading my brush under my tree line, defining my tree line. Then I would like to have some grass in front of the tree, so I already have blue, so I just need a little bit of yellow on top of that. And I put my yellow on top of that to show an indication of my uh, vegetation. Then if you need to come back to your uh, white, cleaning your brush dry, you can go back and pick up some of the the, dry, the wetness off your paper and to bring back the uh, bring back the light tones or bring back your yellow or, you, or we can go darker a little bit darker to add some shadows now we'll make some uh, juniper trees or trees so we're making dark green with dark blue and, and, and red. Now remember there's a sunset going on, so we put our tree, we just dab, put enough to show that there is a, uh, a tree. So these are just strokes and picking up some of this dark color, bringing it up, using it. And if we go on to go put some uh, lines in there, we just go to our, our, our uh, line brush and get some more of this dark tone, purple. And then put our some of our branches in there. And this is sort of like a, a quick beginning. And then it's always good to put it aside. And then we'll see where it goes. And then we'll get another sheet of paper. You're going to notice that every painting that I do starts that way. And it's mainly with the thought of building and layers and taking time to let the paper and uh, uh, the water and then some of your pink pigment, pigment, your color work. Let's try that yellow again. And then my orange. And then my dark red. And then my uh, blue. Put my blue up here. And then put some on the bottom again. And then between the red. I'm going to put some red. If I do it slow, then the, uh, the coloration becomes more intense. If I go really slow, then it's really dark. All right. Well, someone asked, um, did you use salt with your artwork? Uh, no. That's one thing I learned a long time ago not to, to do. I mean, that's what you taught. If you're in class, teachers will, will tend to show you those tricks. 
and I never used uh, uh, any any uh, salt or any kind, anything that will work that way. You can just throw sand on there, and the sand, after the paper, everything's dry, you can dust it off. It'll do the same thing. Or what you can do, another thing you can do here is uh, take, uh, I don't have a toothbrush, but if you had a toothbrush, so this is wet already. So this is the same trick, but you're not using salt. You're using water, and it does the same thing. The more water you add or drop on top of your, your coloration, if I put more water here, it's going to move everything that I did. So this is what I've done just by without brushing, no tricks, just water. You can add more color, darker colors, brighter colors, more blue if, I w if you wish to. On top of what you just did. And you can move the water. And here I'm just going to add a little more water. And taking some of the dark color there. And then I'm going to go get some red, mix my, my dark, darkest blue I need, and then put it on top of, I'm going to stop, dab. As it's drying, every so many seconds, the color sets. You don't have to brush any more than you have to. And these will be my, my tree line again. I'm going to get some red and put it in front of the tree line to show and create some, showing some green there. I'm just throwing it down, drying my brush a little bit, using the tip of the brush to show movement in the uh, vegetation there. And someone asked, do you like working in watercolor, oil, or acrylics? Uh, I mean, when you paint, you like to paint with everything. You get introduced to one media, and then you start to uh, uh, question, what can I do with, see if I can work with acrylics. You can use acrylic just like watercolor. You can use acrylic as a base for oils. You can do all your underpainting in acrylic and then go over it and develop a, an oil painting. Or you can do the same thing with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, you're doing a, an acrylic painting on, a, on canvas, which you want to do a, uh, a, uh, a oil painting, and you would have, show this here. This is my assistant here, Chad Thornton. This is done in acrylic, and it's on a white canvas. And using the same technique that I was using here, I'm showing you, can be used just like this. But the difference is watercolor is cold, and acrylic is warm. So uh, water, acrylic will set faster. To learn how to do this, sometimes it's good to try acrylic. It sets faster, it works faster, it's quicker. Here you can slow down in a cool place. Watercolor can set for hours because the room is cold. If the warm is, I mean, if the room is warm, watercolor will seem to set every seven seconds. So this is still damp, and this is almost dry here. And what we can do is go back to that while this one dries a little bit. So to, to, to be a, uh, uh, an artist that paints every day or does, does have interest in painting, you, medium, medium really doesn't matter. You just learn how to work with them by working, making time. Uh, most people ask me, how, uh, what does it take to be an artist? 
and what I've learned in my life is if you have the interest, if you see the, the, uh, that you feel interested in something, all you do is, is uh, uh, take the time, make the time. If you take an hour a day and do these washes, it will give you experience. It will help you develop your, your way of looking at what's happening. Now, let's do a, a, a canyon scene. Again, you're going to have your primary colors, your yellow, your, you're going to have your orange. Let's put up some more yellow here. Do I have? How old were you when you started painting? I started painting when I was about like maybe eight years old in grade school. People could see that I, I was... Uh, interested in painting and uh, sort of encouraged me that way. People saw that I could, I could, I could see and I could artic artistically uh, 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 see things and reproduce them on paper and so they gave me uh, the encouragement to continue a little gray a little purple for the skyline the shade the clouds so this is the foreground and this is the vegetation And then we go back to trees, brown, dark green. You can change brush. Uh, let's try some. I like to do Hogans because I was born in one. See how I'm leaving a white area? That's where all my highlights will be. And then my dark areas are coming in. So this is the skyline. And then this is the, uh, let's see, the doorway to the Hogan. And we'll put a livestock thing here. I can always go back over these colors if I need to intensify or like any of these colors. See, like here, I want a darker blue. I just go over layer on top of what I had. Or if I'm not liking it, clean up my, 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 my blue. And then Go back and layer, show some movement in there. Try some purple. Showing some of the movement in the uh, in the rocks. As I'm going, I'm timing also. And uh, uh, every so many seconds, I can add or take off. Or let's say I wanted to a wide area in here. I would take the, the water and the pigment off using a dry brush. So it's like a magnet. If that doesn't work, you take a Kleenex and do that and bring back the tone of the your highlights. Someone asked, how do you choose your color schemes? Uh, it's just what you see. 
if you look out in nature, it'll give you all the colors. So now I'm going to slow down and pay attention to the detail of some of the areas that I need dark and bring those out. Uh, someone asked, are you inspired by the same visuals as when you were eight years old? Yeah, yes. It's easy to go back to where I grew up in my mind because you can see it. You, you've been there. You actually were there touching the sandstone. You were there actually uh, seeing the coloration in the canyons change because of how clouds and how uh, the sun plays a part in all the colors. So color is one thing that, that really pays off when you're painting. To know your colors, know how you construct that, how you mix each tone. By mixing it every day and working with it, you're studying what you're doing. You're learning, you're actually working you're teaching yourself how to do things. This is an arbor, shady place, shade place where the Navajos have sort of like a, a carport. If they have a fancy wagon, they can park it in there. See, when you work with landscapes and what's happening, seeing what's there. Uh, you you learn to 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 see it on your on your uh, in your artwork. When you're putting it in your artwork, you learn what it is and the structure of it and the coloration of it, and you learn to see it. Your mind with your mind, you can take pictures. You can uh, go back and remind yourself with something to to. I go back by thinking about my childhood. As a kid, I was out there. I grew up out there. I tended to goats and sheep and cows and horses. And I was with my grandfather, and, and he, he sort of uh, uh, got me started with horses and things. And I started drawing, wanting to draw horses, paint horses. You might hope gone is coming through. I'm gonna add just add more water on top of this. So what we'll do what he'll do is when it's damp enough I will lift that. And lighten it up. Then I can add uh, my grays on top of that to bring out the image a little bit more. Uh, someone asked, does your Navajo culture encourage artists? Sure, I mean, it's, it's a way of life that's... Uh, any artist can look at their own culture and, and actually uh, learn how to paint their, what is, what is, where they're from. Huh. Now, let's go back to the, the ones that we, we've done before. The first one. So this is one that we did uh, at the beginning of... A, so again, if you look at this piece, and you can rotate it, uh, it don't necessarily have to be what I thought it would be at the beginning. So now it's dry. I can use it anyway. I, I, I can use it as a uh, a uh, uh, underpaint for another piece if I want to. What I really like to do is, is what I call uh, to do, uh, I paint Yebiches, who is, uh, again, from Navajo culture. Uh, the uh, Yebiche is the spirit, the soul of, of, uh, of the earth itself, the energy of the earth. And he becomes a physical being in the winter and also a healer. So that's our physical portrayal of, of the energy. We, we, we think that, I mean, that's how he appears in the ceremonies. So this is a, a quick demo of the face of that. So here's the, here's the, uh, 
the, 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 the paper and, and I want to use it for that. So I'll find a spot to put the eyes in where he breathes. Then I'll do the, the, hair, show, the hair, the movement of the hair. I'm not trying to make a perfect yebiche, but more or less a portrayal. If you want people to feel what you feel, that energy is placed in the painting. You know, that, that is what is a giving. That's what people respond to, react to. Here's a dry piece of paper. And again, I just need a round brush and then some blue. And I'm going to start doing the sky. Uh, someone asked, how long can you keep the watercolor paper in that water? As long as you want. Because it's designed that, to do that. If it disappears one day, that's too long. The biggest thing that you can do for yourself that's interested in, in art is make that time and actually spend the time working. I know some people like to take art classes and painting classes. Uh, if you don't do it every day, you'll never get anywhere with it. You have to do it every day. And you have to make time in order to make a difference in what you do as a, as a painter. That's how, the more you work, the better you get, the more experience you have. Uh, you learn to understand the structure of the paper, how brushes work with you. It's a partnership between the water, the paper, and you and your fingers and your mind and your good brushes. And then costs, you can keep it simple in, in your color selection. I know some people say it's professional medium, professional uh, paint and all of this. Uh, I've never really listened to it. I just went and did it and, uh, and uh, it really didn't make a difference. Uh, the quality of the paper, how, what you do with uh, low-end brands and what you do with low-end paper. Paper, when it's uh, uh, not of quality, it wouldn't work. Then you get the frustration. Then you're angry, <laughs> tearing up your paper. <laughs> but you, you, if you keep it up, 40 years later, those little pieces are 600 bucks a square inch. So because, uh, because that's the effort you put in it. That's your time that you spent making it and learning how to, how to do it. And then you learn how to share it in the process. And then if you share it, you feel a whole lot better. If you hide it, then it never becomes anything. People don't see it. So... Well, everybody, thank you for watching.